Dimma lived and ran her business in Sabo, the same town where Adugo lived. And when she heard of her husband's death, she felt nothing but pity for him. She had lost him for almost two decades to that woman, and it was a pity that he had to die lonely and abandoned by the people he had given his everything for. When she heard that Obiageli relocated from Otiba without giving him a notice, she smiled sadly. She had known Obiageli was a user, and it was only a matter of time before she showed Jidenna her true colors. It's a pity, Jidenna. We started well, but you allowed the devil come in between us. I forgive you, and I'm glad that your children do not hate you, even after everything. We just needed to maintain the distance for our sanity. May your soul find rest, Tijidenna. Hmm. And for you, Obiageli, you destroyed a whole family for your own selfish need. Beware, God cannot be mocked. You will surely reap what you have sown, Dimma soliloquized. Obiageli's first son, Dubin, relocated his mother and brothers to Sabo, he had studied banking in school, and so he got a job as a banker there. The pay was good too, and so life was going on well at the time. Before they left Otsiba, Obiageli had informed her four sons about their move and how they needed to keep it a secret. But the two youngest sons were surprised at the news and asked their mother if Uncle Jidenna was aware of it. On hearing that, Dubem, the first son, shouted at them, Keep quiet, you two. Who is your uncle? Don't you know your uncle when you see one? For your information, this must stay within us as a family. If anybody hears about this, I will skin you to our life. The boys were shocked. Ah, but why is that so? Uncle did not do anything bad to us. It's not fair. Oh. At this point, Dubem was irritated by their naivety. And Obiageli had to send them inside the room before he would descend on them. Her second son, Ikenetu, was also fed up with the whole uncle thing. He felt choked by Jidenna's presence. Mother, I have been waiting for you to take action since. This man has been like a bed bug in our lives. He feels he's too good and knows it all. Doesn't he have a family? Why can't he go and school his own children and leave us alone? Obiageli assured him, don't worry, very soon all this will end. I don't even know why a full-grown man would not give himself sense. Since he feels he is a god sent to me, no problem. But we don't need the god sent again. He can look for another widow to start helping since he is allergic to his own family. Dubim rented a three-bedroom apartment for his family and resumed work the following week. Life was going on well for them. Dubim had a good banking job. Ekene was an expert in conjuring out money from his laptop and he was lucky to have so many unsuspecting clients. This was the major reason he did not like Jidenna in particular because he always condemned his kind of job. The two younger ones were both in final year in the university. Obiageli was indeed accomplished. She had successfully raised her sons well and they were on an independent path. Two were making money already, while the other two would soon start making money also. She did not feel the need to start any business. She had always been a soft life woman anyway. And thankfully, Jidenna came into her life when her husband died. And so she never even had the reason to do anything. She just stayed at home every day, eating and relaxing. One day, Obiageli had gone into town to get some groceries when she bumped into Dima at the mall. She was shocked and did not expect to see her, but she quickly composed herself. Good day, Ma, Obiageli greeted while smiling. Dima turned to look at her and was irritated by her sight. Obiageli continued, What a small world. I never knew you people also relocated here. I thought I was never going to see you again. Ma, I really want to thank you for all you and your husband did for I and my children since my husband died. Only God can reward you. Dima smiled bitterly and told her, Only God can reward you too. And then she walked away. Obiageli was astonished. What does she mean? 
Besides, she's looking unusually good. What could be the reason? As Jidenna started looking after his wife again, Obiagili could not control her curiosity and so she had to trail Dimma to know where she was going to or where she stayed at least. Who knows, if she locates Jidenna, she could still ask for forgiveness and get him to turn to her again. Dimma was unaware that Obiageli was following her and so she went to her restaurant. It was a beautiful and modernized restaurant and immediately Dimma got to the door. A sales rep came to help her carry her bag respectfully. Obiageli was shocked to see this but when she looked up to see the post on the restaurant that read Dimma's Delight, her eyes almost popped out of their sockets. Impossible! Dimma owns this place. How? When? Time has really changed a lot. But Obiageli still found it hard to believe and so she had to ask someone to be sure Dimma truly owned the restaurant. Luckily for her, she met someone who knew a little too much about Dimma and she got all the necessary information she needed. She got home that day still in shock and greatly puzzled. So Jidenna is dead. But if what this person said is true, that Dimma's husband had never come around even before his death, that means she never accepted him back after she left him. Oh wow! But wait oh, it definitely has to be her children who set it up for her. Eh? Dimma is now a CEO. <laughs> and I'm here. It's okay. It's good to meet you again Dimma. We are in this sabo together. I know exactly what to do. Obiagili had a plan carefully thought out and when Dubey and Manikene returned home that night, she told them that she wanted to start up her own restaurant. They were surprised because their mother had never wanted to do anything before. Dubey asked her, Mother, what is happening? Why do you suddenly want to start up a restaurant? Obiagili shrugged her shoulder. Now that you people are no longer at home like before, I feel lonely most of the time and end up thinking too much. I don't want to develop hypertension, so it's better for me to get something doing. Ekene then laughed and said, But mother, you know you are not a good cook. No offense, so. But why don't you look for something else to do? I mean, money is not a problem. We can even start up a shopping mall for you if you want. At the same get something doing. Ekene then laughed and said, But mother, you know you are not a good cook. No offense, so. But why don't you look for something else to do? I mean, money is not a problem. We can even start up a shopping mall for you if you want. At the sound of that, Obiagelis ears pricked. Shopping mall over restaurants. I like that. This one is better. Dubem asked, What is better? Obiagili said excitedly, a shopping mall. I want you two to open a very big shopping mall for me. Gelly Small. Dubem and Ekene shouted in shock. What? Obiagili looked at them confused. What is what? Is it too much? An ordinary mall. You can't tell me that. Not after everything I did for you all since your father died. I sacrificed my happiness for you. And now that it's time for you to make me happy, you're shouting what? Obiageli began to cry. Dubem and Ekene could not bear to see their mother crying. And so they consoled her, assuring her that they would do it for her. Obiageli was very happy and thanked them. Obiageli smiled complacently. I will be the owner of a shopping mall. We will know who is bigger very soon. Dubim and Ekene were worried about what their mother demanded. Dubim blamed Ekene for running his mouth so much. But I didn't mean it. I just joked with it not knowing that she would take it seriously. Ekene defended. But you know mother, she won't let us rest until we set it up for her. What do we do now? Dubim thought for a while before saying, If I guess right, we need over 100 million to build and fully stock up a mall to get it running. I work as a banker and my 10 years salary is not even up to that. Except I will have to take a loan, but the manager would not approve that amount for me. I think the only option would be to secretly access some customer's fund. I can check for some accounts that are fixed and whose owners don't check up on them. 
But I will raise only 50 million while you have to raise up the remaining. Ekene scratched his head and accepted. Okay, I will have to top up my gain then to get better clients. I will get my own share very soon. Every day, Obedili would remind her sons about her shopping mall and they assured her that they would sort it out very soon. Dubim had to start doing some secret research and started moving customers' money into his private accounts. He hoped to be able to pay back the money before any suspicion arises. He had also met a very beautiful girl named Chioma. And they had gone past the talking stage and we're talking about marriage currently. Chioma had agreed to marry him and Dubin planned on taking her to meet his mother. Obedili saw Chioma and immediately loved her. Chioma was beautiful and tall, but she looked calm and naive. Obiagili sensed that she was not one of those smart town girls and so she would be able to control her when she marries her son. That way, she would still have the final say in her son's life. She gave the young lovers her blessings and urged them to hurry up with the wedding. Dubim was glad that his mother accepted and loved Chioma and he could not wait to be finally married to her. Shoma too was in support of them getting married as soon as possible, but she had an issue with where Dubim was staying. Dubim, you know marriage is another world of its own, and I can't move in with you after marriage into your family house. It will breed over familiarity and unnecessary issues will start to arise. I want us to have a proper plan for this before getting married, Chioma told Dubim. Dubim agreed with her and told her that he would rent a separate apartment for them before they got married. But Shoma was still not satisfied. Babe, you don't even get what I'm trying to say. We need a more reliable and permanent place. We can't keep on dashing people money by paying rent. Don't you think it would be better for us to build up our own house? Plus, it would be a very big wedding gift to ourselves. And your mother would be very surprised and pleased that you were able to achieve that. Dubin liked the sound of that and agreed immediately. He told Chioma to get some nice house designs while he would also get his and they would then be able to get the estimates of the particular house they wanted. Few days later, Chioma brought a lot of beautiful house designs for Dubim. They were all magnificent mansions and Dubim was really intrigued by the idea of owning a mansion and so he chose the most expensive one among them. The engineer who analyzed it estimated it to cost roughly 70 million and even if it was much, Dubim agreed to do it. He had figured out how to secretly get fund from the bank without getting caught. However, he had to be very careful and so he decided to put Chioma in charge of the house project so as not to raise any alarm. By this time too, Ekene had been able to get his own 50 million for the more projects. He hit a very big jackpot and an unsuspecting client was the prey he devoured. They started the building immediately and Obiageli ensured that they rushed everything since the money was available. While the shopping mall was going on, Dubim's mansion was also going on secretly. Chioma was always updating him on the developments. And in exactly six months time, Geli's mall stood magnificently tall in the heart of Sabo and was on the lips of everyone for weeks. People were amazed at the structure and the money they guessed must have gone into the building. A date was fixed for the grand opening and flyers were shared out with Obiageli's picture on it and a special discount for everyone that day. She wanted it to be known that she owned the place and so she made sure that the flyers got to as many people as possible. Of course, Dimma soon got the flyer and was astonished to see Obiageli on the flyer as the owner of the most talked about mall. Hmm, life is indeed unpredictable. After everything she did, she still got away freely and is even pulling weight. Good for her, Jidenna. It is you who laid yourself as the sacrificial goat to be slaughtered by Obiageli. You lose, she wins. 
the mass said, and flung the flyer away. Obiageli's younger sons had to return from school to attend the grand opening of their mother's mall. And when they saw the building, they were blown away and wondered how their mother was able to own such an expensive place. But they did not say it out for fear of being roasted. The day for the event finally came and Obiageli was really overjoyed. She dressed up in the most elegant dress and wore a very pronounced headband that was visible enough to announce to everyone that she was the CEO of the mall. She even went behind her son to arrange for some media people to come and cover the event. There was enough for everyone to eat and lots of sales were made too. Obiageli was very much fulfilled and was grateful to her sons for making her dream possible. Since the shopping mall had been achieved and was already running, Obiageli finally had time to plan for Dubim's wedding. But when she asked him, surprisingly, he told her that he and Chioma were not in a rush and were taking their time. She did not understand his reason and just urged him to hurry up with his plans before another man would snatch Chioma away from him. And then, one Sunday evening, Obiageli and her two older sons were at home when they heard a knock on the door. Ekene went to open the door and was about to run back in fear when he was caught. Obiageli and Dubim went to find out what it was when they saw some financial crime officers holding Ekene. They did not need anyone to tell them the reason why they had come for Ekene and so they did not try to drag but pretended to be confused as to what was going on. Ekene was taken away and Obiageli watched on sadly as her son was taken. She had known him to be in the business of scamming people but he had always been very careful. So how did he get caught this time around? However, what she did not know was that during the course of her mall's grand opening, a lot of people had taken videos and pictures which they posted on the internet and so it was easy to locate Ekene by contacting someone and offering him a juicy reward. Ekene was already wanted since he duped an elderly woman of a whopping 60 million. Obiageli and Dubim knew that there was nothing to be done about Ekene's case except from refunding the money, which was not possible at this time. They were also scared of being implicated and prayed that the officers did not come for them too. Chioma continued to supervise the house projects and at this time she had collected more than 50 million from Dubim. Since the house was already halfway gone, Dubim decided that they started planning for their wedding and Chioma agreed and they fixed a date to that effect. Two weeks before the wedding, Dubim went to work on a Monday morning but as he entered into the bank premises, he was apprehended by some police officers. It came suddenly and so he was confused about everything. But before he could say anything, he was handcuffed and taken away to the police station. He was still confused as to why he was arrested and no one would tell him anything. Not long after, the bank manager came to the station and asked him where he kept the 100 million he stole from the bank. Dubim was dumbstruck. So he had been discovered. He could not say a word to defend himself and the police officers gave him several punches on the face. He then started to beg. Please don't kill me. I will talk. I took the money, but I will pay back. I was going to pay back. The manager looked at him disgusted and gave him 24 hours to return the money or action would be taken against him. Dubim was done for. He knew it was game over and if he wanted to make it alive, he had to return the money. But he had used the money to build the mall for his mother and also the mansion Chioma was supervising. He thought of what to do and concluded on turning them in. He requested to make a call and called his mother to explain the situation to her. But Obiageli would not have it. She could not imagine losing her shopping mall just a few months after getting it. She told Dubim to think of something else apart from what he just proposed. 
Dubin found it unbelievable that his mother would want to hold on to the mall at his own detriment. He then decided to call Chioma and when he explained the whole situation to her, Chioma felt really sorry for him and agreed for the house to be used as a part payment for the loan. Dubim was a bit relieved and the next day when the manager came, he told him about the house and they all went there to see what the house was worth. Dubim went home to get the papers of the house. But when he took them to the house Chioma had been taking him to, the place was locked and when he tried to call her, her number was switched off. He called and called but there was no breakthrough. At this point, Dubim started to sweat profusely. The manager and the police officers were getting impatient at this time when a car pulled up in front of the building and a man came to open the door. Dubim was relieved and asked the man who it was. The man replied telling him that he was the owner of the place. Dubim found it amusing and showed the man his own papers that showed that the house belongs to him. The man collected the papers and knew at once that it was fake. Mr. Man, I believe you have been duped. Call the person who showed you this house to do some explanations. The bank manager understood what was happening and immediately ordered the police to bundle him. They gave Dubem several rounds of slaps and dragged him into the car. Dubem had to tell them about the mall and they drove over to the location immediately, only to meet some financial crime officers there also. Apparently, Ekene had to bring them there since he could not refund the 60 million. Obegili was also mentioned as his accomplice. The bank and the financial crime officers had to come to an agreement to share the money realized from the shopping mall after it is sold equally. They reached an agreement and the mall was put up for sale. The way the news of the mall's grand opening flew all over town was the same way the news of the fraud crime attached to it flew, but this time it flew even faster and everyone in Sabo soon knew that Gailey's mall was built with illegal money. Obiagele was arrested alongside Dubim and Ekene and she was charged for being both their accomplices. She was given 10 years in jail with no option of bail. And Dubim and Ekene got 15 years and life imprisonment respectively. Ekene's case got complicated as the woman he duped suffered a heart attack and later died as a result of losing her money. Her children were the ones who pressed the charges further and made sure that he got a befitting punishment. Obiageli's two younger sons had graduated from school at this time, but when they heard of what happened to their mother and their brothers, they refused to return home to Sabo and went far away to start life in a place where no one knew about them. Dimma was preparing to travel for her son's wedding, which was to take place in Canada, when she heard the whole dirty drama surrounding Obiageli and her sons. She had planned to travel with Adugo, her daughter, and she knew that when they got to Canada, they were sure going to have a lot to talk about. Life was indeed unpredictable. Thank you for watching this story. Please, if you've not seen the part 1 and part 2 of this story, do well to check it out in this channel. Share with me what you learned from this story and what you loved about it. Please share this story out with your loved ones and give this video a thumbs up also. Subscribe for more interesting stories until I bring another story your way. Bye!